So my take on the Ballerina Farm article is that inadequate men have a fantasy of seeing women do it all. Now, poor men claim it's out of necessity. They need for you to go 50-50 on the bills and do 100% of the housework so they can feel like the man of the house. But this man could afford nannies, cleaners, housemaids, chefs, everything without blinking. He's heir to JetBlue. So why is he fetishizing her suffering? The article says he doesn't want her to have nannies, housekeepers, or even epidurals when she gives birth. I'll have a long video about this up on my YouTube later and also go ahead and subscribe to my subscription page. They're both linked in my bio. But the short version is he's forcing her to live without comforts he can easily afford because of the power. It's not about the work getting done. It's about making you do it. And this is why men get mad even when working wise hire help with their own money. The guy gets off seeing you on your knees. So from the beginning of their relationship, he has built and maintained a hierarchy. So the author of the article states they have no child care, no kind of nannies, and this is by her husband's choice. And she gets so ill from exhaustion, sometimes she can't get out of bed for a week. If he sees this and still lets you do this, what other conclusion is there to draw than he likes seeing you suffer? He hates you. So here's how David has built and maintained hierarchy. When the author of the article asked them, you know, who runs things, who's in charge? Are you submissive to your traditional husband? He says, we are co-CEOs. I'm not a boss. You know, this is my partner. But look at how what he does contradicts that. She said, when we were dating, I thought we should date for a year before marriage so I could finish school. And he said, it's not going to work. We've got to get married now. A month after that, they were engaged. Two months after that, they were married. These modern men are far too savvy to say she's beneath me. I'm the boss. Women are less than men. She does what I say. But they're not a team. She's his employee. And you can tell because their rules don't apply to him. He says no house help for you. No nannies. And meanwhile, he gets help from men he employs on the farm. And why does he get to independently veto the idea of her having help when her social media is what's bringing in partially so much money? How come she only has control of her body when he's not around? She's had one epidural out of eight pregnancies because he was out of town. He stated that he wasn't out of town. He was just at home shipping things from their farm. That was more important than his wife giving birth. But anyway, because he was gone, she was able to choose for herself and she got an epidural and said it was an amazing experience. Now, she was only able to give this answer because David was what out of the room finally taking a phone call because he has followed her all around in this interview and he's constantly answering even though she's the one being interviewed. He's a micromanager and a lot of people are like, well, why is this guy like this? Because he's already wealthy. As I said, one of the things he's heir to is JetBlue. But what do those guys with those Republican conservative values fetishize? Hard work, the idea of making it on your own, creating something. So he probably secretly feels very inadequate. So this mentality, the idea that men should automatically be served, be, they're just the head of the household, it's not based strictly on finances. It's this idea that men are inherent leaders and deserve automatic deference. So even though she's making probably millions in her own right, she's still under his thumb. This kind of mentality is honestly affirmative action for white men. They gut the DEI measures, they get rid of the legally enforced structure that keeps them from discriminating. It's not about merit because look at what happened to Asian enrollment and acceptance into the Ivies once there was no longer affirmative action. They hardly took any people who were not, you know, Caucasian. But white men deal with their counterparts, white women, by using benevolent sexism. I love you. Your place is in the home. Women aren't cut out for the workplace. They have to do too much hard labor. Oh, stay home. You'll enrich your life. You're not just going to work your life away for some boss who doesn't appreciate you. You're going to work for your husband and your family and you're going to be so fulfilled. This is the lie women are being sold. And the trad wives and their husbands are always telling you it's so much better to work for your family and home and much less exhausting. But notice how she's doing way more labor than the work they claim would have been so exhausting. And yet she's not achieving any of her dreams. The theme of sacrifice kept coming up a lot. And when the author asked her, well, what did you sacrifice? She said, I gave up dance, which was hard. You give up a piece of yourself. So she was attending Juilliard when she met this soul-sucking dream killer. And he insisted on getting married right away. 
And three months after they got married, she was pregnant, the first Juilliard undergraduate to be expecting in modern history. Do you know why that is? Because getting into a school as elite as Juilliard means you're typically serious about your dreams and you aren't going to let anything get in your way. This isn't Harvard. This isn't Yale. You cannot buy your way into Juilliard. You have to have the talent. He saw her talent. He saw her drive. He became jealous and he wanted to destroy it. Notice something. He's made it impossible for her to pursue her dreams, but he has her working two or three times as hard to be the ideal trophy wife for him. Because two weeks after she gave birth, she's already competing in a beauty pageant. And this is indicative of what's happened with a lot of her child rearing. While she has to do all the work for this herself, the weightlifting and the giving herself ice baths, he provides all that's needed. He didn't mind making it possible for her to compete. I mean, somebody had to watch the kids. I know it wasn't him, but maybe he broke his ban on childcare for that because he sees it as worthwhile to show off her body in a bikini and five inch heels two weeks after she gives birth. So he can point and say, look at my trophy. My trophy is better than your trophy. And here I mean trophy wife in the truest sense of the word. You're a trophy the same way that the deer he shoots is a trophy. Something for him to take down, suck the life out of, and then hang on his wall as a conquest. I have killed this thing. He killed her spirit. He hollowed her out, took away her dream, and filled him, filled her with him, with his dreams and what he wanted. So after convincing you the world is too much of a rat race, you can't possibly handle it, you can't make it in the dance world, he has you working two to three times as hard to fulfill his dreams. And if you ask me, he's still jealous of her, even though he has her locked inside the house. She can't even go grocery shopping without all these kids behind her. She's charismatic and people like her. That's how she's got these massive followings across all these social media platforms. And this man still yearns for the spotlight. The uh, author of the article is talking about how he's continually trying to steal focus during the interview. Daniel wants to take me to see the new dairy farm buildings while she goes back into the house to make lunch for the kids. We stop at an irrigation ditch, which he explains, the offices, which he explains, the milking stations, which he explains. Another man in love with the sound of his own damn voice. Author says, I check my watch, feeling edgy. I just want to talk to her. Came out here to speak to her. Just one more stop, he says. She called out to him. Okay, we're just heading your way, he adds, driving the opposite direction out into the fields to show me another ditch. I know he must be mad because he took away her dream and he continues to try to suppress it, but she still found success in another way. So he punishes her for that. So it says, more about how they do everything his way. Daniel wanted to live in the great western wilds, so they do. He wanted to farm, so they do. He likes date night once a week, so they go. They have a babysitter those evenings. That's valuable to him. He didn't want nannies, so there aren't any. The only space that was earmarked to be his wife's was a small barn she wanted to convert into a ballet studio. All of a sudden, it's the kid's schoolroom. So she sees her trying to eke out a little bit of joy with her ballet, still trying to hold on to the hope that inside she can perform. And this man's not an idiot. She's extremely famous. And women have gotten back into ballet after a lot more. She's still in fantastic shape. Women come on this app all the time and talk about how after 40, they went in point for the first time. Yeah, she won't be dancing the lead in Swan Lake for ABC, but she has enough of a following and a reach and enough resources that if she dedicated herself right now, she could have a dance career and he's terrified of that happening. He does not want her to have that joy. So he makes sure he gets in between her and it. And the thing is, she would have had to do less work to keep up her body as a ballerina and she would have gotten paid leave plus professionals to help train her in a way that wasn't going to be too exhausting and taxing when she did have all these children. Well, she wouldn't have had as many if she was really dancing ballet, but her husband convinced her this was impossible only to make her do way more work to live out his dreams rather than her own. I have so much more to say and so many more receipts to add. Check for my YouTube video this evening. The link is in my bio and please, if you want more from me and to be able to ask questions and see private lives with special guests, join my subscription series. Also, I see when you all tag me and stuff. I see when you all say you want certain content. I'm doing my best people, but I am bereaved. I'm going to be working slower than usual for the foreseeable future. Thank you very much. And to all those who have expressed condolences, I appreciate it. That's it. Like and follow for more.